This is an example of leveraging the OpenSpirit uh, framework along with leveraging a popular internet search engine. Um, in this example, we're showing a web application that consists of three parts. The center part is a map that's leveraging Esri's web map services. In this case, we're able to access uh, some of the base maps that are served up from ArcGIS Online. We equally well could have been displaying uh, web services that are hosted internally uh, within a corporate network. Um, Left-hand side is going to represent how we're going to filter out the data that we're interested in, and it's similar to uh, the type of filters you might see in an internet shopping site where, based on what you're looking for, you have different filters displayed. And the right side will be a table view. So let's just see what we have uh, indexed. We have actually scanned through a number of different data stores in our office here. I've got some GFRAME projects, Kingdom projects, OpenWords, PPDM, Petra, Recall, Segway and Studio, all these different repositories have been scanned or indexed so I can very easily find data across all of these. Let's say I'm interested in finding wellbores. Let's go ahead and turn on the wellbore data type and then it's going to show both in the map view and the table view of the wellbores. Um, our index is spatially enabled so if I want to I can put a filter on here that I only want to get data that's in the Wyoming area. Then I can zoom into that area and we see the wells posted there. Um, if we uh, then apply some filters, we can further subset our data. As you see, it found 8,300 items uh, that um, met our criteria here. Uh, so let's go ahead and apply a TD filter. You notice that the filters I have here are appropriate for the data type. So for well bores, I can filter by TD, operator, field, etc. These filters are all configurable. So there's an admin interface where you can set up what uh, attributes you want to use for filtering. In this case, I filtered to be just to display wells. They're deeper than about 1,500 meters that are within my area of interest. And I can go ahead and uh, devote more space to that, uh, to that table and sort by wellbore name. And you see that I have the same wellbore loaded many times because it turns out it's been loaded to different projects. I have that same well, 1TP3 in PPDM, OpenWorks, Kingdom, uh, Studio, etc. So I can very easily find the data you know, this mechanism by using filters and by using uh, my area of interest. I also can uh, apply text search. Say I only want to find wells that have GR in them. Now it's got me down to a, a smaller number of just 32 wells. I want to find those wells that have gamma ray and how about ILD? And it turns out none of those wells have that. So let's see if I have a, uh, any wells that have gamma ray and SP. And there it found 23 wells. So you can very easily combine text-based searches, um, filter search, and spatial searches to get down to the data of interest. Well, once we're down to a limited number of wells, we can then afford to go ahead and uh, uh, ask to see some detailed data going back to the original data source. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my, my subsurface viewer here, and let's make some room so I can see both. And let's go ahead and drag these wells into my viewer. So this is a pure web-based viewer that's going to allow me to visualize, in this case, some of the well data. Let's make a new well log plot. Let's go ahead and get uh, some logs. Let's get, draw a gamma ray log in here. And let's get that, compare that to SP. And we can do, if we want to, a simple histogram. Let's make this occupy the full. We can do a histogram. So this is a pure web-based viewer where I can now see the data coming from, in this case, it looks like an OpenWorks project. Uh, I can also drag picks onto this view, drag my A sand, my B sand, my dolomite, and then scroll down. I think all my picks are down the, on the bottom here. Yeah, there, there are my different, uh, uh, this is my reservoir interval here. Um, I also can, if I have two curves, as I do here, I could actually do a, a cross plot. So I can select two curves and do a cross plot, and let's position this over here. And now as we move our cursor around in one window, in this case I'm moving it to different bins in the histogram, I'm seeing the corresponding samples highlighted in the other two views. So this is showing some of the well-related data. And that data was coming, again, from OpenWorks. It could have equally well been coming from any of the data stores we had connected to here. Um, let's go back and let's uh, reposition our, our, our area of interest here. And again, we're showing the wells that have gamma ray and SP, and we can take that filter off. Now I want to add some other data types. I want to find in this area of interest, 
You know, I found the wells of interest, but let's see about seismic. Let's see what seismic's available here. It looks like there's a number of different seismic lines here, uh, seismic surveys. And again, they're coming from different, uh, different data stores. Some of them overwork, some kingdom, Segway, studio. And let's again just select one of these surveys and uh, let's drag that um, into my, my web viewer. My web viewer then displays a seismic display, in this case, uh, pulling out the center line. And let's go ahead and fit this. This is line 173 from this 3D survey. And I can go ahead and scroll through this by tens or by individual increments. And if I have some interpretation data, I can also see that. And I, I believe I have some, some horizon data here. So let's turn on my Seismic Horizon 3D and show me all the horizons that are in this area. Let's go ahead and drag um, this onto that. There we're showing that horizon. So in just a few minutes, we can readily find data coming from any of our data sources, visualize it inside of a web browser, and then if we want to transfer it to other applications for use, we can do that as well. And as you may have noticed, I already have Patrell running here, and it's connected to OpenSpirit. So if I want to see that horizon in Patrell, I can simply drag and drop it. There, I'm dragging that horizon to Patrell. That's going to cause Patrell to go ahead and extract that horizon and bring it into the Patrell project. Similarly, if I want to see that seismic 3D volume that I looked at a moment ago, I can go ahead and drag that into my Patrell project and it goes ahead and brings in that seismic data. So there I'm showing the, the seismic data coming from that uh, OpenWorks project. And of course I also have some well bores here. And I can choose, uh, let's see, if I want to get just wells from that OpenWorks project as well, I can filter that down easily here. And let's go back to our well bore. And we can go ahead and select all these wells. And let's go ahead and drag all the wells in that area coming from that project into Patrell. And let's make Patrell occupy our full window here. And we can go ahead and turn on our wells. And we now see all the wells, the well bore header, the directional survey, check shots were all brought in. And we can see the, all this data inside of Patrell. So that's one way of transferring the data. That's an interactive transfer of data from our web application. Um, we also offer a couple other mechanisms of allowing you to transfer data without having to have the application running. So let's go back to our window here. Um, you notice these icons, and we're going to follow the paradigm that you're familiar with if you shop on Amazon or any internet shopping site of adding data to a shopping cart. So let's say that we're shopping for wells. Let's say I want to get these wells. I'll add them to my shopping cart. And if I go back now and let's get that seismic 3D volume, we'll add those two 3D volumes and add that to my shopping cart. And as long as we're at it, let's get some horizons here. So I'm getting a number of different horizons. We'll add those to my shopping cart. So now I can go out and look and see what's in my shopping cart. And you see I've got my well bores, my seismic, and my seismic 3D horizons. And if I'm ready to check out, um, instead of having to supply a credit card, in this case I need to supply my name, who I am, what my email address is, and where do I want to deliver this data? And I get to choose from any of the data sources that I have connectivity to. I can deliver it to a Patrell project, Studio, Petra, Geoframe, etc. Let's say I want to deliver this to a, uh, say, an OpenWorks project or a Kingdom project. We'll say we want to deliver it to a Kingdom 8 project, and we'll pick the, uh, the project. And now if I actually submitted this request, it would run a background job to transfer that data from the source, in this case OpenWorks, to the destination, in this case Kingdom. And then when that job had finished, it would then send an email to my email address notifying me that uh, the data had been transferred. So that's another mechanism of, of transferring data. The last mechanism is one where instead of just a one-off delivery of data, you might want to create a subscription akin to a, a, a newspaper subscription. So let's go ahead and just clear some of our filters here. Uh, let's uh, start over again. Let's, let's take the approach that we want to actually establish some selection criteria. So let's say I want to select well bores. I want well bores that uh, are deeper than a certain amount. And I only want well bores from, let's say, my, my uh, PPDM 
Wellmaster in this case. And uh, we also only want well bores that are within a certain area of interest. And we can zoom in here to further refine that. Now let's say again, I only want well bores in this area. So now I've selected well bores that are deeper than a certain depth within this area of interest coming from a certain source. So now if I create a data subscription, again it's going to want to know who I am and it's going to know my email address and where I want to deliver the data. In this case we can go back to that same kingdom project we looked at earlier. Now it wants to know how often do I want to deliver data. So if I say I want to do it at midnight every night, what it's going to do is there's going to be a background task that wakes up that selects well data it looks for well data where the TD is greater than 1,500 uh, meters coming from a certain data source where the wells are in a certain area. And I can add multiple data types to this. So I can be subscribing to wells and logs and seismic and interpretation based on whatever sort of uh, subscription criteria I want. And then the data will be delivered again in the background and email sent to me. So again, we've shown three different mechanisms of uh, taking the selections from the, from the web interface. One is by dragging and dropping, uh, an interactive workflow, and the other is a one-off delivery of a shopping cart contents, and the third was the recurring data subscription. And again, all this can be readily customized to meet your needs. If you have an existing web map, you can use that as the interface here instead of the map we have here and add into it the functionality that I've shown you here. And again, this is all enabled by using Open Spirit's services in the background uh, web services to access the data, services to, to uh, transfer the data, and also using our data viewers to allow you to visualize the data within the web browser.